I know this has been in the works. You guys obviously have been working on two home games in London. Now that it's in the books, it's out there. What's the feel around here that you guys are getting in terms of feedback? Well, I think we need to take a step back. What's been in the works is to be as creative as we possibly can to make sure we all meet our goal, which is to have NFL football here in Northeast Florida forever. And, uh, you know, a lot, a lot has changed since Shot arrived. There's no talk of blackouts. There's no tarps in the stadium. There's big investments that have been made in Daly's Place, over $100 million in, in the stadium, the London Initiative, and, and even bigger things to come with Lot J. And all of those have uh, two things in common. One, they benefit not only the football team, but they benefit the community. And number two, they help support our objective of keeping the NFL here. And uh, Jacksonville's a different market. We're blessed to live here. There are so many unique and great things about, about Jacksonville, but we have to follow a, a different game plan to, to be successful here as, a, as an NFL uh, 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 community. And today's announcement is very consistent with what we've set out from the very beginning. Shad wants to have a championship football team uh, on the field, and he wants to have a winning organization off the field, and you know that's what we're pursuing. You mentioned uh, the dynamic has changed around the NFL. It changes every year, but it's really changing because of a couple of new stadiums. Can you explain that a little bit, uh, Las Vegas uh, Stadium and also the LA Stadium, and just how my understanding is maybe it changes the margins of local revenue and how you kind of you're judged in that category? Well, the, the NFL is constantly changing, constantly evolving. Uh, all the teams are focused on things uh, off the field. You don't have to look any further than the New England Patriots. As good as they are on the field, look at the investment they've made outside Gillette Stadium. So they're focused on uh, things uh, off the field as well because all of us uh, need to do that. You know, we've been near the bottom of the league in the bottom quartile and, and have understood that but have been working really hard to make progress to advance against that because that um, helps, uh, helps us achieve our objective of having stability here in Jacksonville. There's been, been a big change and, 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 and the impact of that change is gonna be felt starting next year. And that's when the Oakland Raiders move into their new stadium as the uh, Las Vegas Raiders, where the old St. Louis Rams move into their new stadium as the Los Angeles Rams and the same with the San Diego Chargers who are now the Los Angeles Chargers. Those were teams that we used to compete against from a revenue standpoint. Now they've jumped, jumped way ahead. That's a strategy, that relocation strategy is a strategy that Shad is not interested in pursuing. So we're focused on making things work here. We're confident that we can, but we're gonna to have to be creative. What's the sensitivity to announcements like today from a fan perspective? You, you were in the St. Louis area, you know they've relocated two different times. So, plus the losing, obviously that's, that's happened here. Uh, do you understand, I guess, some of the fan reaction? Were you almost expecting some reaction? I, I don't think anybody can understand what a relocation can do uh, to a community more than I can. I've been through it three times, unfortunately, in St. Louis. First with the St. Louis Hawks a long time ago, and then with the St. Louis Football Cardinals, and finally with the Rams. You know, I know what that could do for a community, or what, uh, do to a community. We had the front row seat uh, in Oakland when we played there in December. And, you know, coming out of that game, standing next to Shad, knowing that, you know, our commitment, principally his commitment, and his willingness to believe in what Jacksonville can, can become, gives us all, all the confidence and, and, and the courage to believe that we can be the catalyst to help turn around uh, downtown Jacksonville. So, Am I, am I surprised that, that, that some fans uh, are, might be uncomfortable with this? Of, of course not. I mean, I 100% understand that. You know why? Because fans don't follow the Jaguars because how they rank in revenue. They don't follow the Jaguars in terms of whether they're financially stable. That's not what motivates them. They want to be connected to a team that wins, that wins football games, that has ticket prices that they can afford, that when they go to the game they have a good time and they feel like they're, they're, they're respected. I understand that. So. We're always going to have a little bit of a disconnect here, but I can, I can tell our fans, and it's, and it's true from the day, first day that, that Shad owned the Jacksonville Jaguars, he's committed to doing everything possible to give the fans what they have expected and what they've come accustomed to, which is um, having the opportunity to follow a local football team in the fall, and that's not going to change. Do you expect uh, people to say, I'm, I'm not buying season tickets, or will there be some of that kind of backlash? 
uh, say, I, I want a refund or those kind of calls? I mean, now that you've taken another home game away from a fan perspective. Well, first, let me, let me respond to that. In terms of ask for a refund, I think that's a little misunderstood. Uh, by design, Jaguar season tickets for 2020 are not on sale yet. We have not yeah. offered season tickets on a renewal basis or a new sales basis to our customers. Why haven't we done that? Because we knew there was the possibility that there would be a second game in London. And we wanted to make sure that as our fans had the opportunity to make their decision on whether they were going to buy, purchase season tickets, they had all the facts. I'm sure there will be some fans that, that will choose not to, to purchase season tickets. There was almost 10,000 of them last year that didn't buy season tickets. So things come up, come up and down in terms of, of changes you know, that we deal with. It's, it's within our control. You know, we have to be focused on winning uh, games on the field. That's most important. And then keep our eye long term. Long term is, is what we're really focused on. You know, we wish we could just snap our fingers and everything be perfect, you know, but that's not, that's not realistic. We know that we have a long way to go to realize our full potential as a football team. And I think all of us would agree that love Jacksonville so much, we have a ways to go to fulfill our potential as a community as well. You said earlier to me, I think on the conference call, if you look back at 17, when you were winning football games, that was such a great year, into 18, that uh, I think, and you correct me if I'm wrong, but you almost reached your maximum potential in terms of season tickets, in terms of dollars. I think you said 70 out of the 72 million in terms of potential. But you said it's still, you guys were treading water. Uh, what, is, is that, what does that mean in layman's terms? Uh, it means you still need other things or there's only so much potential in that, those tickets even if you sell out every game? Yeah, what it, what it means is that as a business organization, um, we have in many respects the same standards as our fans. Uh, our fans are not satisfied with having the worst football team in the National Football League. That's not their standard. They don't want to be last. They don't want to be last in anything. Well, I can tell you, as far as the business of the Jaguars, we're the exact same way. As an organization, we're not going to sit back and say, okay, we're happy being at the bottom of the league in terms of how we're measured, in terms of local revenue. I know that's not a, a Shad's aspiration, and most of the people that work for the Jaguars aren't interested in, in that any well anymore, anymore than our fans would be interested in, in that. So, you know, we're, we're focused on being a growing, thriving business a business that can continue to do great things for this community and hopefully serve our customers. Because if, you know, if we're not growing, if we're not a growing business, we're a dying business. And that's not a good alternative for anybody. I think, uh, though, I'm not gonna go into economics here because I'm not very good at math. I save that for my wife. But uh, people are looking at local revenue and they're saying, well, not enough local revenue, but the value of this organization has gone up threefold since Shot bought it. Is that a fair question or is it not really apples to apples? Well, let me, let me ask a similar question that maybe a lot of our fans who own homes would understand. A lot of people purchased homes 10, 15, 20, 25 years, 30 years ago. And those, those homes are worth a lot more today than they were when they purchased them. But does that help you make your mortgage payment each month? Does that help you pay your utility bill? It doesn't. The only thing that does is if you sell the team, then you're going to uh, you know, uh, 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 receive some value because it, it, it increased in, 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 in price, uh, or it gives you the ability to go out and borrow more money. What it doesn't do, it doesn't help you, help you pay your bills. It, it, it's, it's, it, it's, it's something that in reality, Shad Khan's not selling the Jaguars. The Jaguars will be owned by his children after, after Shad moves on to whatever he chooses to move on to. So the fact that it's worth more really doesn't help us year in and year out. You know Shad very well. You're around him more than anybody else, uh, at least around here, I would think. How much, does, how much does it eat at you that the perception sometimes is it's about money or it's about London or it's about elsewhere, yet there's a thought in here talking to folks how much he loves the city and wants to see the city grow and all the downtown development and everything else that you guys are talking about. Um, but sometimes there's that disconnect from the outside looking into where you sit, probably. Well, I'm not, I'm not sure that I fully comprehend that, but I can say this. Uh, I've been blessed to be here only eight years. 
okay? And I look up and down Bay Street, and I look at downtown Jacksonville, and I ask the question, I can't believe all this property is available for development, okay? It's not as if people aren't invited to come here and develop, okay? We've talked about Lache and, and other things on many occasions, and, and, and we talk from the perspective of, we're somewhat of a reluctant developer. We know that for the Jaguars to be successful, downtown Jacksonville needs to get closer to realizing its full potential. Where is everybody that's doing it? Shad came to the conclusion, if no one else is gonna do it, then he's probably gonna have to step up and do it himself. And that's what he's, that's what he's done. And I can say this, great, great communities are built in a lot of different ways. One of the ways they're built is having people that have the economic resources to take interest in that community and invest in it. And Schott has that belief. And you know, I think as a community, we're fortunate to have someone like Schott here. Is there concern at all? Um, I know you're not coaching the football team, but I looked up numbers this past year. The eight teams that played in London came back, had a bye week, were 0 and 8 after that. Here in Jacksonville, I think we were 4-4 four and four going into the game in London. Obviously lost that game and went on a little bit of a slide. Uh, is there still that topic when we think about London of competitive disadvantage, uh, or at least some of the way, at least the numbers shaped out this year, looking at the teams that played over there? What did you say on the radio when we won three years in a row in London? Could it be an advantage? Yes, yeah. of course it can. Yeah. You know, the NFL is very, very uh, competitive. If any team should have an advantage going over there, it's the Jacksonville Jaguars because we know how to do it. So, you know, this, you know, and NFL is very, very competitive and, you know, we can come up with whatever theory we want to. The facts are we've played seven games over there. We've won three, we've lost four. I think if you compare that to the rest of the games we didn't play in London, it compares pretty favorably. 2025, 2028, 2032, I don't know, pick your spot. How do you, what do you think it looks like down here? I think What's it, your hope? Well, my, that it looks like? my hope is that it looks like the community that uh, we all believe Jacksonville should be. You know, if you have the opportunity to, to travel and, and see great historic river cities like Jacksonville, and you can see what those communities have, have been able to do, you know, you get, you get a little envious. Now, it's one thing being envious, but beyond that, it's a total another different thing to step up and do something about it. And that's what Shad's, Shad's prepared to do. A lot of people believe that you can't have a really great community unless you have a strong downtown. There's probably some people in this community that disagree with that, and that's fine. But, you know, we happen to believe, and I think many share our belief, that downtown Jacksonville has just scratched the surface of its full potential, and it needs something to get it going. And Shad's in a position to do that. And the best part about that is, one, it's Shad taking the risk, okay? Number two, it potentially has a significant benefit financially and otherwise for the city of Jacksonville. And finally, it's gonna strengthen the NFL team here in Northeast Florida. And I think that's a win-win-win for everyone. Do you, uh, you, you mentioned you, you're confident, I think, in getting Lot J and getting that moving. Still a lot of politics and, and red tape to go until you get there. I think you presented the timeline maybe a few months from all the, the DIA and then the city council. But how high is the confidence level that what you guys have done will come out on the other side to say shovels in the ground here later this year? Well, I, I'm confident because I happen to be a big believer that doing something great for downtown is going to be good in the short term and good in the long run. Um, but we're also uh, realists. It's, it's not 100% under our control. And if some, some place along the line, uh, the community believes in a different vision, then you know, we're, we're big boys. We'll move on and you know, we'll, we'll figure things out. Uh, but you know, I happen to, to come from a city that passed on a lot of great opportunities and um, you know, sometimes you regret that. Sometimes you're thankful. Other times you regret it. I hope in this particular case, you know, we're able to advance and get, us, get ourselves closer to, to having a downtown Jacksonville that gets close to realizing its full potential. Last question. Uh, how important was it to you guys and how difficult is it with the NFL to preserve 
the two games you guys did for 2020, Chicago, Pittsburgh, obviously uh, could draw some big crowds here, but is that a hard thing to do with the NFL to, to say we want these games here or how is that process? Well, what, one of the hard things to do with the NFL is to make sure that we maintain our position in London. It has served the Jaguars and it has served our stability you know, over the last seven years in a great way. There's a lot of teams that are interested you know, in London. But at the end of the day, London supplements what we're doing in Jacksonville, not the other way around. So of course, you know, if, if we have games on our schedule that are big games, and in our market, they tend to be our non-divisional games. Um, so to protect the Steelers, which unquestionably will be our, our biggest gate next year, you know, we'll welcome 30 to 40% of the crowd will be Steeler fans. That's, that's just the way it is. Um, as far as the Bears are concerned, that's the second most popular game we have. So what we're trying to do is make sure that we deliver our loyal fans here in Jacksonville the best possible matchups. And uh, thankfully, you know, the league was supportive of that. Appreciate the time. Okay. Thanks, Brett. Thanks.